You know security is hard, so let's assume We're probably gonna get pwned by noon But if we all start to get the basics right We might not fully get pwned until Hey everybody, Brian Johnson with 7 Minute Security here. Uh, I'm doing a video counterpart to an audio podcast episode I did, uh, which you can check out at 7ms.us. The episode is 217. This is a, a mini series on installing some Ubiquiti network gear, specifically the Edge Router X and uh, Long Range Access Point. And so in this episode, number 217, uh, I talked through a couple things, including the initial setup of the router, uh, getting some DHCP servers and VLAN set up, getting QoS turned on, and getting your Xbox set up to NAT properly. So uh, I'm just going to kind of show you the overview here uh, via video uh, to augment that audio. And let me just hide my ugly mug here and we'll get started. Um, okay, so some of this is going to look a little bit differently than what you might see right out of the box, but um, essentially you get your machine hardwired into the switch. I think by default, you pull down a uh, 192.168.2.x net, uh, network address. Uh, otherwise, it might have to be statically assigned. I can't remember. Um, but then from there, all you have to do is go into these wizards. And um, I chose the one here, this WAN plus 2 LAN, which uh, is grayed out a little bit here because I can't show it to you without nuking my config, which <laughs> I don't want to do. But all that's really involved is you set your internet connection type, you tell the router what interface your internet connection is plugged into, and uh, you hit apply. And it essentially says, cool, I'm gonna set some default firewall rules, reboot, and we'll be good to go. Okay, once the router reboots, you will have switch zero, which has made interfaces two through four a part of it. So in other words, if, if we plug a LAN cable into Ethernet 2 through 4 will pull an address off this 192.168.2.x range. But one of the main reasons I got this router was so that I could set up an isolated Internet of Things network. So to do that, all I had to do was go into this DHCP area. And I created a network called IoT. And really all I did, I just added a new server, called it IoT. I picked a subnet of 192.168.7.0.24 with a range of whatever I picked. 77. Uh, the router will be dot one. DNS will be two and eight dot eight dot eight. Oop. Eight dot eight dot eight. That's essentially all I did. Save that out. That means the DHCP server is good to go. And then the last piece is to go back into dashboard and under add interface, I added a VLAN. I called it VLAN 7. I put it in the switch 0 interface. Uh, you can call it IoT. And I gave it the dot one address in that range. So I gave it uh, 192.168.7.1 slash 24. OK. And save that out. Now, I want to pass this VLAN to Ethernet 4, which has my access point connected to it. So the missing step for me here was to go into the config for switch 0, go under the VLAN tab, and then check this box <clears throat> for making the switch VLAN aware. Then down here in Ethernet 4, I'm passing VLANs 6, 7, and 69, which are all this is my IoT VLAN. These are a couple other ones I have set up for other things. So once I did that, everything as far as the router is concerned is good to go. Now there's some more config to do on the access point, and that will be coming up in part three or four of this series. Um, I just want to show you a couple other things in, in sort of the initial setup department. One is how easy it is to set up QoS. So when you open up the screen, it'll just have a, a place to in, insert a policy name. So I just called it uh, just SQ1 or SmartQ1. And then I went to speedtest.net or my cable provider's speed test page and found that 
while my network is quiet, it'll pull down an average of 60 megabits per second and it'll upload at an average of six megabits per second. So I punch those values in, hit save, and that's it. Now this thing will balance the load uh, such that ideally I never, you know, max out the connection. Um, now you can go nuts in here and, and do all sorts of advanced queuing. This is not something I have expertise in, and so uh, I'm just staying away from it. But if you just want simple QoS, clickety click, hit save, you're you're good to go. Okay, and last thing I wanted to go over was the Xbox natting that I had uh, quite the conundrum with, but but eventually got through. Uh, so back under dashboard, uh, go under DHCP servers. I'm going to go into my IoT. And here under static mapping, I've got my Xbox One. Uh, this is the wired connection and Xbox One Wi-Fi, which is the primary. Um, that piece is important because you need that when configuring this IP for uh, plug and play. So if you head over to the show notes for today's episode on 7ms.us, you will see I've got all the commands listed out here. This is the, this is configuration you'll need to do via SSH, but essentially we're setting up the service on switch 0 0.7, which represents VLAN 7, uh, turning on NAT PMP secure mode, uh, letting UPnP know where our WAN interface is, and then setting up a couple of rules such that just the Xbox can play with universal plug and play. Uh, now, just so you can learn from my mistakes, there were two other pieces that tripped me up here. One is that my Internet of Things subnet hands out open DNS servers. And so even though my NAT was working fine, I couldn't sign into Xbox Live and none of my games would work. Well, that's because OpenDNS was blocking these by default. So if you're like me where you have a really restrictive policy and you just want to let through a few domains, uh, these are the ones that I whitelisted that got me up and playing games correctly. And then the final piece I mentioned is that my power settings on my Xbox were set up in such a way that the box wasn't really rebooting when I told it to reboot. So I had to go into settings and issue a hard reboot. And then once I did, uh, both NAT and these OpenDNS whitelists uh, came through correctly and everything was good to go. So that's what I got for you today. Uh, again, part three, I'll get into to talking about how to set up the wireless portion of this configuration and also show you how to set up a guest, a segmented guest network that uh, has a voucher coupon system so that if you have guests over, you can say, Hey, here's a voucher. You know, it's good for two hours and you're capped at uh, one meg down, one meg up for <laughs> for uh, bandwidth. Uh, it'll be fun stuff. So uh, I'm at uh, seven min sec on Twitter, number seven, M-I-N-S-E-C and uh, and on the web at seven ms dot us. So please reach out and get in touch if you have questions or comments. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. You've been listening to seven minute security a thrice weekly podcast covering IT and security news, pen test tips and tricks, and career advice. For more information, including a full episode guide, how-to articles, and sponsorship opportunities, visit www.7ms.us.